what about vegans and vegetarians? So yes, as we were saying, uh, animal-based foods have right. more absorbable iron, so iron that's easily absorbed by our body. So that means that plant-based sources of iron are not as good. So you need to typically have more uh, iron content from those uh, foods to be able to absorb the same one to two milligrams that we need every day. Because as I said, we don't really excrete iron. We don't lose iron in any other way apart from just losing skin cells and cells of the lining of our mucosal in the gut. Mm -hmm. Um, And that means we only lose one to two milligrams of iron. It's a very small amount, and that's what we need to absorb every day. And to absorb that from um, plant-based foods that have typically we only absorb 5% or maybe 10% maximum, Hmm. means that you would need to have 20 milligrams, 30 milligrams of iron daily from those foods in order to be able to absorb the the one to two milligrams you need. Right, because like you had said earlier with spinach, it was about one milligram per bunch or something like that. Yeah, per portion, yeah. Ah, okay. So for example, for breakfast cereals, which are the plant-based source of iron that contains fortified iron, they can have, as I said, about up to 30 milligrams of iron per 100 gram portion. Uh, So we don't normally eat the 100 gram portion, Mm -hmm. typically it's 30 to 50 uh, gram portion, but we could get maybe half of what we need daily just from breakfast cereals and then the rest from a mixture of pulses, lentils, beans, and dark green vegetables. Okay, but then how how much of the iron-fortified cereals, the iron in that, do we actually absorb in our body? Yeah, we absorb up to 10%, so it will be more or less the same as from all other plant sources. The problem with the plant source of iron is that it can easily bind any other nutrients and components in the diet. And when things bind iron very strongly, then our body cannot absorb that iron very well. Yeah. And that's what happens with iron in breakfast cereals or iron in plant-based sources. So, for example, compounds in tea and coffee bind iron very strongly, and then we, our body cannot absorb those complexes of the iron bound to the coffee or the tea. Uh, so, for example, if we were having breakfast cereals with tea or coffee, that would really decrease um, the absorption of the iron. So maybe we would only absorb 5% of that added iron. And most people will have their breakfast cereals. <laughs> exactly. apart I was if about they to say, children, yeah. If they are children, no, but if they are uh, adults, yeah, they will have their breakfast cereals with either tea or coffee and also with milk. Mm-hmm. And milk contains uh, calcium, which is also um, what we call a divalent metal. And if we have a lot of calcium in the same meal as we have iron, we can have also an inhibition of iron absorption. So that's why the absorption of iron from breakfast cereals, it's really not that great. Mm. Um, And that's why manufacturers really add a lot of iron to really make sure that people can absorb some of that iron. But with children, children typically tend to absorb more than adults because they still have their absorption mechanisms really upregulated and uh, they really absorb more. So for children, breakfast cereals do contribute to their total absorption of iron. Yeah, I mean, it helps that they don't have tea or coffee with it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And they sometimes maybe have orange juice that really helps absorption of plant-based iron. Huh, orange juice helps yes. actually Yeah, so anything that absorption. contains uh, vitamin C mm-hmm. uh, really helps absorb plant-based iron. So for example, in dark green vegetables, like peppers, tomatoes. They do contain less iron typically than breakfast cereals, but they do contain a lot of vitamin C, so that means that we can absorb the iron much better. Ah, So it really helps. Yeah, and if you're making a salad or something like that with spinach and kale, maybe you can add some oranges or (laughs) peppers. And some lentils. And lentils. Yeah, lentils or some... um, chickpeas, soya beans, or anything like that. It's good for the protein level as well, but it's really good for iron levels. Absorption. Uh, to, yeah. yeah. Oh, and okay. they have, lentils have much more iron than, for example, vegetables, mm-hmm. like sp- uh, spinach and tomatoes. So if you mix it up, then that really helps. Okay. Earlier you talked about being bound. Mm-hmm. So certain foods mm-hmm. bind iron more strongly, so that decreases absorption. But what exactly did you mean by bound? Some audiences might yes. be a little bit confused <laughs> Sorry, by maybe that it, Yeah, it's too much of a no, 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 <laughs> chemistry <it's fine. laughs> talk. Um, 
So um, it's the same effect actually with vitamin C. Just because something binds um, iron doesn't mean it's necessarily bad, but normally a lot of compounds in our diet can create these chemical bonds between iron. So it means that instead of just having a free element, we have uh, something not flowing freely and they make it really unavailable for absorption by our cells. So that particularly happens with these compounds from plants that are present in um, red wine, in coffee, um, in tea and in cocoa as well. Oh, cocoa, like yes, chocolate. Yes, chocolate, yeah. So the cocoa bean, oh, so. um, they also have these polyphenolics or phytochemical compounds mm. that are really good for us. Actually, they have what we call a non-nutrient value, but they're really antioxidants and they're very good for us. But they have this problem of binding or creating this chemical reaction that makes the iron unavailable. Not only iron, they do that to other minerals as well that we have in the diet, such mm. as copper, manganese, yeah. selenium. So maybe if you're having your breakfast cereal, also don't have chocolate on the side. <laughs> yes, and have just orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's all about having it in the same meal. So as long as you maybe have the coffee or tea either before or after the meal, one hour before or one hour after, then it's fine because the absorption of iron is really something very quick after the food is in the stomach. So it means just not having it present in the same meal. So then you can have coffee or tea with chocolate maybe an hour after the breakfast cereal. Ah, yeah. I see. So is that why certain iron supplement pills tell you to take it 30 minutes before you actually eat yes. anything? Yes, yes. Okay. So it's the same principle because if you eat something that can really decrease the amount of iron you absorb from supplements. Okay, so then just certain things like tea, coffee, chocolate, they create this kind of wall, a wall around iron so that it's just not as not easily absorbed, absorbed by your gut. Yeah, yeah. Some okay. fibers will do that as well. So, mm, Like um, which in, fibers? In whole grain. Um, so, for example, some of the breakfast cereals that are fortified with iron but are whole grain and have a lot of fiber like bran flakes, they typically have double the amount of iron added in comparison with corn flakes, say, because of that fiber. So what manufacturers do is that they really double the amount of iron they add in the bran flakes because they know our body will absorb less because of that fiber present there. Uh, it's called phytate, it's a, sort of a, a, a fiber compound that's present in whole grains, um, not only wheat, but uh, all sorts of whole grains. Um, and that is really the main compound in the diet that we have that decreases iron absorption. Wow, okay, so these are all tips that women, yeah, yeah. Uh, adolescent children, vegans, vegetarians, and anybody that's experienced a trauma recently with a lot of loss yeah. of blood should take yes, into consideration. Yes, and the other thing, so uh, for vegetarians, obviously that's not an option, but if you have a mixed diet and you eat animal products, um, the type of iron in animal products also increases the absorption of plant-based iron. So, for example, if you were to have a steak with spinach and lentils, you would absorb more iron from spinach and lentils than if you had your meal without the steak there. So the meat iron really promotes the absorption of non-meat iron. So meat actually can help the absorption in plant-based yes, iron. Yes, exactly. Is that because it somehow breaks down that wall, that binding yes, that you're talking about? Yes, it's because it prevents those reactions from happening and that wall from forming in the first place okay. because it has this protein that helps really uh, stimulate the absorption. Oh, that's very good to know. <laughs> This podcast was produced by the European Food Information Council as part of the Speaking Up for Science Action Network project.